Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Episode three. It's an exciting moment in our life. Right? We have momentum now. <laughs> we have, yes. One one time's a charm, two time it, I don't know the saying. Yeah, I was going to say, you just butchered that. I don't know it, so I'm not going to try to, but whatever you were doing, we're going to... It's just wiping. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Anyways, we are back for episode three. Three. Yes. Um, we are excited to be back talking about Chicago real estate. Yeah. I feel like every time we start, we need to have that little disclosure. Yes. Local. What you listen to next is going to talk about Chicago real estate. Chicago in the city, mm -hmm. local, not specific to your property or anywhere else. Yes. Right. So what did you do this week? What have you been doing in Chicago? What have you taken advantage of this What have month? I taken advantage of? Well, we are in full holiday mode, right? Yes. I love this time of year in the city, but I also have to acknowledge and admit it's a, it's, it's a lot. It's a little exhausting, right? There's yeah. a lot to do. Obviously, we are still working to the nth degree. We still have people out there buying and selling. We're doing all of our prep for next year. Mm -hmm. We're trying to sprinkle in some holiday cheer. I think every night at about 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm making a mad dash downstairs to make sure that our elf on the shelf <laughs> is properly positioned for the morning. Um, Wait, do you have to move it every day? It goes away every night and it comes back every morning. So yeah, it needs to be moved every day. And oh I forget my. about that a lot. So. <laughs> Well, that's why you have a husband. <laughs> he, we we forget about it a lot. It. Oh, in the, okay. in the, so it's one of those things that we're absolutely enjoying the holidays. We're, what we're, you need to start doing is just leaving it on the floor and letting the dogs just move it around for you. Yeah, but the whole point is, and the, the girls are in like the best, best age for this now, is that they... They believe it all. Mm -hmm. And so we watched the movie before we started it again. And if you touch Lynx, Lynx is our elf on the shelf, he loses his Christmas powers. So if somebody were to touch him and move him in the middle of the day, it could be catastrophic. Really? Yes. I've never watched it, so I have no idea. It's, it's a very serious thing. But anyway, so, so we're enjoying <laughs> it all. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And I think that's the, the sentiment that why I talk to a lot of people is that it's that balance of how do you soak in all the city has to offer all the fun, the family and stuff like that and not get overwhelmed by it. Yeah. What about you? Totally. I mean, I feel like we've been doing a lot this week. Um, my mom came into town, so that was so oh, that's fun. fun. And she... And your mom's a big foodie, isn't she? She is a total foodie. Oh my God. We went to ABBA this last weekend or this last week with um, uh, in the West Loop. And so... It's her favorite space. She is so adorable. She's like, I took her is there in that, May. Is that the place that you always rave about the spread yeah, that they have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took her there in May and she is obsessed with it. And so she, every time she comes back, she's like, all right, I want to go back to that must restaurant. Have it. I must have this thing. And it's so funny because I'm like, mom, there are other restaurants in Chicago. Like we can explore and there's other really great things and we can go try something new. And she's like, no, I really want this. Mahura, Mahumara spread from ABBA. She's like, the Willow Room is like the one that we consistently go to as well. And she's like, I need their lobster ravioli. So it's always so funny just to go there. Gotcha. But so we had a really good time That's there. That's always the, I always like having people come into town because it kind of forces you to go do things. Some of the <laughs> stuff that you typically do and some of the stuff pushes you outside of your realm. Yeah. And so then last night we went to uh, Dear Evan Hansen, which was really, really fun. Um, and I That's love That's the, the Broadway the, show, right? Yes, it's the Broadway show. So it's and did you like really, it? really, really good. I've tried going kid to... Kid-friendly or not kid-friendly? It is not kid-friendly. Okay. They know. do swear a lot and they do have a couple so it depends sexual on the kid innuendos oh, in there. Definitely so definitely not kid-friendly. Do not go in there. Um, okay. But it's really, really fun and I always... I tried going like a couple years ago when it was pre-pandemic, but the tickets were like four or five hundred dollars and Got it was it. so hard to get tickets. But little hot tip is mm -hmm. I go on hotticks.com org, um, which they always do like 50% off, uh, Broadway shows. And I absolutely love it. They also have a ton of Christmas shows this year right now. You have been so good to us with that. Like we have used that little, that little tip to get discounted, uh, theater tickets all the time. And it's fantastic, right? Yeah. So they like literally set aside two rows in, on the main floor, on, on the both, orchestra level, on the orchestra level, For both certain. right and left side. We saw frozen last year. Remember? Oh yeah. 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 I love frozen. Oh my God. A little, let it go. And it's great. <laughs> Especially going into the new year. Totally, totally. Okay, well, let's, uh, um, yeah, I think it's time jump to in. jump in. Um, first and foremost, thanks to everybody who sent questions in. We got some really, really totally. good ones and some very, very relevant ones. Do you want to 
kind of take the first one? Sure. This is always our favorite, favorite one. So it's always talking about tax bills in Chicago. So yeah. obviously we know that this year we had um, delayed tax bills and it it definitely came out this last month. So everyone's kind of talking about it. Um, everyone's tweeting about it supposedly yeah. as well. So what was the question? Um, so I finally received my tax bill last week in Cook County. It went up almost 20%. How is that possible? Oh. Well, we've been, we've been, we knew coming into this, that this was going to be drastic. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to explain in the sense that taxes in Chicago are already very complicated, right? <laughs> but we expected this, this hike to seem extreme, but it, as you and I have talked so much about, it seemed so much more extreme than it actually was. Oh, totally. Because we have to remember that our taxes are paid in the arrears, meaning that mm -hmm. we're always paying for the year behind. So in 2022, we're actually paying 2021's taxes. In 2021, we were paying 2020's taxes. Now, where this all got so goofy, or goofier maybe, is the fact that in 2020, March 2020, Cook County put a COVID reassessment in place under the mindset that this is going to be a rough economic ride. We want to try and help our homeowners. We are going to put a, an additional reassessment in place, a COVID reassessment yeah. to lower the tax basis and make it a little bit more financially easy on people. Okay. This happened all before we knew anything that was going to go on with regards to the housing market, real estate values or anything. This was just literally a, let me help you out. So essentially they just reduced the assessed values of people's houses so that they would get a reprieve on their tax bills. Exactly. Essentially. The hard part was, and what we were telling people even at the time was that, yes, they were doing it immediately, but people weren't going to see those tax bills until 2021. Mm -hmm. So, Hey, we're going to possibly save you money or not increase on you. A lot of taxes actually went down. Mm -hmm. So in 2021, those tax bills actually went down but we have to remember they went down in a, in a bit of an artificial way, not due to the market, but due to the concern of what the market was going to do back in 2020. Yep. So 2021, a lot of people saw their taxes go down. Some people saw their taxes stay the same. Very few saw them go up, but it was artificially down. In 2021 then, gosh, I'm going to confuse myself saying this so many times. In 2021, <laughs> we had our triennial reassessment. Every three years in Cook County, we reassess taxes. But why is that? Because every other county in Illinois does it once a year. The reason we do it every three years is just the sheer amount of properties that we have. Yeah. The, the assessor couldn't keep up with it. And literally, they are going around and kind of doing what they can to keep up with it. And it's just sheer volume. So they do it okay. every three years. Your, your tax basis, your valuation will stay in place for three years. And then every three years, then they'll reassess either mm -hmm. for better, for worse or whatever. But so then why do tax bills change on an annual basis? Because that's one thing that does come up is we, I mean, even in negotiations, we negotiate 105% expecting certain. tax bills to somewhat go up on an annual basis. Well, taxes tend to go up, right? Yeah. They very rarely tend to go down. <clears throat> and what changes every year, what is assessed every year is the multiplication factors that they factor in for yep. the taxes. So that for, we could say, hey, we're going to use the same valuation. If we take a $500,000 property that's been assessed by Cook County at $500,000, that valuation is going to stay in place for three years. Now, that's not to say the money that they ask for in different points of that isn't going to go up, right? Yeah. So we could say, hey, the schools need a little bit more, or the fire department needs a little bit more, or streets and sanitation needs a little bit more. So the multiplication factors against that assessed valuation can go up. Yeah. So then every three years we come in and we do a reassessment to say, Hey, what's happened to valuations in that next time. So what we have to remember is that the tax valuation was artificially depressed in 2020 payable in 2021. Then in 2021, this new assessment came out and right, wrong, or indifferent. Everyone has to admit that most of our real estate values had gone up some of them more dramatically than others because of what was happening with COVID. Yeah. It was the pandemic appreciation exactly. that we saw. Most people did very, very well in it. So when those tax bills just came out, they seemed high because they were reflective of the new valuation, which was increased, but it was the new valuation against the COVID valuation, which was artificially decreased. Yep. So the spread between the two got exacerbated to a bigger amount so that, yeah, we saw a lot of people that said, hey, my taxes are up 20%. My taxes went up as well. 
Now I am taking solace in the fact, and I, I do this for all, all of my taxes. If I'm paying more taxes, <laughs> that means my house is probably worth more money. Yeah. And so totally. I don't like to pay for them. Obviously I continually remind myself that they're supporting a lot of good things, but I remind myself as I get that tax bill that, Hey, the valuation, my equity in my property has just gone up. So you know what, when I look at it that way, I'm probably, I'm probably ahead of the game. Yeah. So I always say, like, remember with taxes that file your homeowner's exemption that's due. It typically opens up in January and I think they close in March, if I'm not mistaken. For certain. Um, so can you just help everyone that's listening? What is a homeowner's exemption? Yeah. So if you actually live in the home as your primary property, it, uh, you get a, a discount essentially on your property taxes, which is really great. The other good thing is you can go three years back in arrears. And so I always suggest that with my clients. Like sometimes I'll look it up and be like, hey, you haven't filed in, you know, three years. Yep. Go back. It's free money in your pocket. Um, it's called a certificate of error when, yes. when you go back and file it in for up to three years past. Yeah. No, it's a great point to note, especially for our our people that have purchased new homes this year. Mm -hmm. We find that that typically it'll roll over if the past person will have it, but not always. And trust me, Cook County's not going to reach out to you and say, Hey, you can save money by, by filing this. So we always tell people to make sure check, check where it's at now, call us, we'll help you check where it is. Um, because that's, that's tax savings year over year. Now, once you've filed it once, and if you don't move or yeah. you don't change your deed or anything like that, the likelihood of it staying in place is really, really high, but still keep an eye on it. Because once again, if it somehow falls off or you're not getting it, nobody's going to be chasing you with, with a check and it's, it's substantial enough. Yeah. It is on your tax bill though, too. So like when you get the tax bill, it's at the bottom. Another great tip um, we always tell all of our clients is to make sure that you are appealing your your assessed valuation. That's mm -hmm. another way to definitely save some money. Um, there's different times that you can appeal it based on what township you're yep. in, so you'd have to check on that. There's also different ways to do it, but typically it's, it's a great savings. A lot of the tax appeal attorneys, they work in a fashion in which it's they don't charge you unless there's actually a savings. Mm -hmm. Then if there is a savings, they take a profession, uh, percentage of that. The other thing that we see is there are some digital companies as well that work for a very, very small flat fee, but actually state that they will not stop appealing until they get some sort of savings. We did uh -oh. that on one, one before once where it was I've a small, never heard of that one. yeah, it's a small flat fee and they just they're motorized. It's a system. They go, they go, they go. And at some point they say, Hey, you just saved wow. this. So that's a good little tip. That's a good little tip. Nice. Okay, moving on. Here we go. This is obviously a very relevant one. I think we touched a little bit on this last month, but very, very in tune with the time of year. <laughs> I'm looking to buy a property in 2023. What can I be doing right now to get ready? Well, I always say the first thing to do is start planning. So set up your team. So your team is going to be your main team up front is going to be your real estate agent and your lender. Yep. So getting those two into place is always kind of like the best way to kind of do it. So, so let me ask you a question on that. Yeah. How do you, how do you find a great agent? How do you find a great agent? Well, I feel like a lot of people actually do find their agents through friends and referrals. I mean, that always that, I mean, I say it all the time, like a lot of our business does come from that. Um, a lot of people actually do find it on websites so like zillow and you know social media all of the and review sites review sites and go on there and kind of see how people are talking about their agents um luckily we do pretty well with that we get really great reviews on google and we uh you dominate yelp <laughs> everyone loves reviewing i love my yelp. yelpers um so yeah that i mean like i feel like that's always a good way to find a strong agent for certain so basically referrals mm -hmm. asking around people you know what if what if you moved here and you don't know anybody? You can go online. Yep, go online. Look at the review sites and those types of things. Call us. What do you think about interviewing <laughs> real estate agents? Call us for certain. <laughs> I actually find that really great. I mean, I literally had a buyer consultation yesterday and um, the lady got my contact information. Actually, that is another great way to find an agent. She went on her school alumni website on her the Facebook page and oh, literally fun. asked around for... They, she was like, hey, I'm new to the Chicago area. The chapter is here. Does anybody have a real estate agent? And my client who's under contract referred me to her. Nice. And so she reached out and it was really great. We had a buyer consultation and she's like, 
I got all these names from all these different people. I'm interviewing agents. And so it was really, really great. I don't always find that people do that. Sure. Um, no, and I, I, you know, it's so funny. So many people ask us, you know, obviously we work with a lot of referrals, right? Yeah. We're so, so fortunate to have raving fans out there and we appreciate everyone that is a raving fan. Um, but even still buying or selling a home is a, is a very intimate and personal process. You know, I tell every one of my clients when we're having initial discussions that, you know, they need to be comfortable Mm -hmm. with me and how I work. It doesn't matter. The first thing I say to them is it doesn't matter that your friend, your colleague, your whatever really enjoyed working with me. That, that got us to this point here. Moving forward, what matters is how you feel. Yeah. And so sometimes that takes talking to a few other people to kind of come back. I always say one of the, one of the best compliments I had a client ever giving, this is going to go way, way back. This was probably about 2004 client said to me, said, Amanda, (laughs) you still remember that (laughs) this thing is like a steel trap. I was like, woof. I remember he said to me, I could tell you the property address, the client, everything. He said to me at the end of it, he said, Amanda, you know, when I, when we first sat down and we talked and we met, we started working together. I really thought you were great. And even throughout the process, I really thought you were really, really good, but I'd never had an experience with an agent before. I didn't realize how good you were until we had all of the other interactions with agents throughout this process. And at that point, at the end of the process, I looked back and said, I had the best agent on my team. And and like that, that philosophy in itself is that sometimes you have to go talk, you know, sometimes you have to go kiss enough frogs to figure out who the prince is, so to say. Um, But it was one of those things that I, I, I do encourage. I don't ever want somebody to feel badly if they're trying to find the right fit for them. And I even tell my clients up front, if for any reason you don't think I'm the right fit for you, you need to have the team that, feels right. Yeah. So what are the main, so like talking to a new buyer, Mm -hmm. they're interviewing. What are the really great questions you would ask to potential real estate agents? You know, for me, where I think a lot of people need to understand more is based on experience. Totally. Like I can sit down with a client And I come forth with 20 years of experience and I can tell you, I have navigated a lot of turbulent situations, but they're all, so time does not relate to experience as well. Very true. So honestly, we always talk about each transaction is completely different. Totally. So being a real estate agent, how many times do you go through a transaction really is a testament to who you are for and certain. what you can bring to for that certain. that buyer. Absolutely. Because there's agents that have been in this for 20 years that have probably done 15 transactions. Yeah, exactly. And then there's agents that have done that in their first year. Yep. One, 1,000%. 1, and the other element is, you know, with regards to the team per se, we have certain agents on our team that don't have as many years of experience, but they were smart enough to get into the business to say, hey, I want to align with all this experience. Yeah. So the minute they hit a situation that maybe they don't know quite as well, they're not trying to wing it. They're, they're coming, coming to, to us, us they're talking saying, to us to say, hey, how would you navigate these waters? So, you know, once again, I think experience in, in my mind is one of the top things that, that people can look for in a good agent who has navigated a lot of different waters and, and really kind of understands how to, how to get through transactions, get through markets and give really, really good advice. Um, yeah. So I think I would absolutely ask about that. I would ask about availability. You know, we see a, a decent amount of people that do this part time. And the reality Oof. is, is I, I, I don't mean to talk poorly about those that do, yeah. but it's a career choice that in my opinion, to really do it well, it's not something that I can only do at certain times of year and, and clients can miss out. We've seen it where certain properties have sold during the regular work day, right? So a client could yeah. be missing out or if I'm not, if I don't have my finger on the pulse of what's happening way too many hours of the day that I even should, but consistently totally. then at that point in time, I'm not doing as good of a job for my clients. So for me personally, it's experience knowing that I can rely on, on my teammate to really navigate anything that could be thrown at us and availability from that perspective. Now that's not to say, I'm gonna be very, very clear. When I first got in this business, I had an absolute threshold to say 24 seven, you can get me 24 seven. That, and that's there a is a huge real estate agents that do this at the level that we do. You burn out if well, you do that. Well, they, we do, we work, we work way more than most, yeah. right? No, totally. We are on the phone at 10 o'clock on Saturday night negotiating. We are in stepping out of family time. We are doing all this and, and that is part of it, right? Don't, yep. don't get into this to think that yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. do some, 
but there also has to be some, some boundaries, yeah. right? There has to be some balance. There has to be some of those things. So I think that it's important to find somebody that constantly has their balance. Mm -hmm. You know, as I joke and say, yes, I'm going to go watch my kids do their swimming lessons. Yes. I'm going to check in my emails every couple of minutes just to make sure that nothing, nothing's passing me by, yeah. but we have to be able to take care of us in there too. But availability and experience are my two things. What, what would you say? What are good questions for you? Oh my God. Those were like the two exact ones that I had. So now I have life. to really think about my, my additional one. Well, I think going back to the team situation, right? Like right now, I feel like everyone is gravitating towards a team and it's so hard in this industry to be a single agent. Very true. I think like having the support staff. So we have Jared who is amazing and crazy good. And he's there in the back to make sure that again, I'm He's doing everything it. correctly because He's keeping the ship afloat, as I say. Yeah, we're good at like the really big picture things. We're good at talking about the negotiations and the the pricing and strategy and all of that. But sometimes those fine details, that's not my strong suit. And so we need somebody on the back end who's making sure that everything is going correctly. For certain. So I think that one. Um, Just to pivot off of and that. And also, if we're not available, that goes back to the availability thing. Yeah. Do I have somebody on my team that is professionally trained by me or you that is going to be there, who's going to be essentially my right arm sure. on that showing? And I know exactly what they're saying because a lot of single agents are out there. And if they don't have coverage, they have to go to somebody in their office and they don't, work with are, day yeah, and they, day they don't work with day in and day out. And so you just don't know who you're kind of getting. Um, so yeah, I would say kind of something like that. No, I think that that's a, that's a tremendous point. You know, it's funny when I got into this industry, there really weren't teams. Yeah. Everyone was individual. Yeah. And you know, as I like to say to clients, I, I think for most agents to get to the point where they have to kind of say real estate is a multifaceted journey. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is I have to admit that there's parts of that journey that I'm not the best person to manage you know, kind of coming to that point, which, you know, is, is not always the easiest thing to swallow, but to say, Hey, there are certain people on our team that do certain things better than I do. Totally. That gives us the ability to really put the best forward. And as you said, just knowing that we constantly have coverage that our, our clients needs aren't ever getting dropped or placed with somebody that do doesn't have the, yeah. you know, doesn't have the depth of the knowledge of how we do things is incredibly comforting for us to know. Yeah. I think the last thing that I would probably add that I just thought about speaking of teams is having the back end people. I mean, we talked about having a lender and like planning with your lender, but do they have a really good lender? Do they have a really good attorney that they are really confident in? Do they have a really good inspector? Like those are the things that I'd be asking my buyer's agent when I would be looking at. For certain. And I mean, someone. as we saw, especially last year when things get competitive, the the good bigger team really made a difference for us because whether we were the listing agents and we were sorting through all the offers or we were representing the buyers, we saw a lot of success in the fact that we could go and say, Hey, this is a really strong agent yeah. that absolutely gets the deal done, manages the client. Well, knows what to do. They've got a great attorney. They've got a great lender. We have a lot of confidence in that when we're going through offers, we, you and I have both said it. There are some times that we see, Maybe, maybe something that is a little bit more of a limited service or this, that, that we kind yeah. of say, Hey, just as a heads up, we don't, we don't know if there's going to be as much of a relationship there or a lead based yeah. program. We don't know how the relationship is. We don't know if the client is really engaged with it. You know, so we are able to present us as an offer package. It's almost creating a foundation for that offer for certain that makes it a really, really strong foundational base. So the seller has the utmost confidence that we can proceed forward and make it to the finish line, totally. especially in a busy market. You never, yeah. most people, some don't make it to the finish line. <laughs> so we just want to make sure. That's what we say when, when the market gets crazy but, like that, it's not about getting offers. It's about <clears throat> picking the one that's actually committed get, to getting yeah. to the finish line. But the big thing about like having the foundational team is really about the communication. The communication is the strongest part in yes. a transaction. Sure. And so if I don't know who the lender is or I don't know who that attorney is, the communication can sometimes break down because sure. we don't know how they work. And that is the strongest position totally. 
for a buyer to work with. Our and it's true. We've well. worked with some, we've worked some with attorneys that we haven't yeah. had experience in the past and they were very, very communicative, but we have also worked with some where, where they kind of see like church and state. And we found that the success yeah. of our clients really, really happens because we are integrated into the process from the day we go under contract to the day, you yeah. know, we're at the closing. A lot of agents at that point kind of step back, but we found success in that. Okay. Yep. We're totally off track I, here. I'm going to reel us like... back in. <laughs> Back to good things that a, that a buyer can be doing right now. So you're saying oh, yeah, start yeah, yeah. with getting well, a team together. Yeah. Start getting your team together. Start putting it in place. Do the, find your agent, find your lender. I think those are the first good starts. Um, what do you think about the plan. idea of like, hey, I want to start looking at listings right now. If somebody were to say to you, I want to buy in 2023, I'd like to start looking at listings right now. Well, A, it depends on when your lease is. Up because that's going to be a starting factor. Are you ready to go right now? Mm -hmm. And if you're not, then maybe we push it off. But again, that goes back to the plan. Are you looking for a needle in the haystack? Do we need a little bit more time? Um, are you looking for something that's readily available? And do you are want you to ready pair to it up with your lease end? Or is there flexibility in your lease? I always talk to my clients about Talk to your landlords. Talk, like, understand that no matter where in Chicago, you are able to sublease. The funny thing is, the Chicago leases all say you cannot sublease, but the landlord tenant's right ordinance says that you can. So there are two contradicting pieces of paper yep. that you literally are signing, but the Chicago landlord tenant's right ordinance trumps the actual lease. It. And so just knowing that is, I think, one of the biggest things that most of our potential buyers always ask. For certain. And on that whole idea of, you know, buyers get anxious, they get excited, they say, hey, can we yeah. start seeing stuff? And I think you're so right. So much of it depends on the time of year, the plan, all of the different pieces. You know, if somebody's looking to be in the first half of the year, then I think that's a much different conversation than yeah. who's looking in the second half of the year. And it's not that it's not that we don't have the time and energy and resources to do it. It's really that we don't want to miseducate people. We yeah. don't want to say, hey, here's what's available to you at this price point in market conditions that could be very different than when you're buying. Yeah. So based on that, you know, we do have some access to do, you know, we can we can use some of our of our software programs, some of our yeah. apps. Zenlist is one that we use quite a bit to help start educating. So if clients want to kind of get a slow drip of seeing yeah. like, hey, what's out there, seeing some pocket listings, seeing some of that, that's one thing. Maybe put a toe in the water here, but yeah. it really depends. The reason that we might say, hey, let's wait a little bit, all becomes is we just want to be careful about miseducation. Okay, so a ton of great stuff. I think the long story short, Finding your agent, putting mm -hmm. together your team, and setting your your strategy for the new year. That's that's the best things that somebody can be doing right now. Amanda, this is a fun question. I love fun questions. What are your favorite holiday traditions in Chicago? Oh, that's a good one. Holiday, winter. Truth be told, I hate cold weather. <laughs> I am the Kathleen Queen, right? <laughs> I wear long underwear from 50 degrees to 50 degrees. So I like how you like wear double underwear though it's it's like 50 degrees is one layer and then it's like 30 degrees is two layers no i i bump up to expedition weights then okay. but anyway so but i i love all the fun things to do in the city during this time of year right the totally. stuff that starts kind of november goes through january february some of it's very holiday based some of it's not one of our favorite traditions is absolutely we've done it for at least the last four maybe five years is to do the illumination lights at the morton arboretum Oh, so I've never cool. been to it. It's, it is a bit of a drive from the city, mm -hmm. but it is such a good experience. It's so fun. It's a walking tour. It's the lights are amazing. No matter what the age, no matter what the dynamic, it's, it's a great night. I know there's a lot of great nights, great See, lights in the zoo city. lights though. Zoo lights are fantastic. I love them. They're part of the zoo, which I think is great, but this takes it to a whole new level. This is like a, an experience. Oh, okay. So that's a fun one. The other one that, that has been kind of a staple in our house, um, we do our Santa visits. We do them at the 900 North Michigan Avenue shops. Um, nice. Always fun. Santa is very realistic there. So we like that. Um, okay, I, I that's still good. have believers. I still have believers, <laughs> yes. right? I'm a believer too. Um, and we've also down there, while we're down there, Bubbles Academy. Um, if you're not familiar with Bubbles Academy, they do a lot of, of kid classes, a lot of kid schools, those types of oh, things. Um, they've got a lot of fun uh, holiday type stuff going on too. Ornament making, cookie decorating, all that good stuff. 
Really? Yeah. That's kind of fun. We did a little bit of a day over there and had fun doing that, doing Santa. Doing Maybe that. I need kids. You can, you can borrow, can borrow. Them. You can <laughs> okay, borrow them. We can even pay you. It's called babysitting. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh my gosh. Uh, last night it was so funny. My mom and I were driving down, down the street and, um, she goes, look at all the nice Christmas lights on the trees. And then we pull up in front of my building and my building has up lights and I'm like, and look at our white trash, like <laughs> up lights, <laughs> you know, cause the other, the other side of the street has like them you know, all hung in the right. thing. And, uh, yeah, no, we actually, like, <laughs> this time of year, we try but I do take, love the lights. We try and take different drives home yeah so you every can see night it. so that we can see the lights i love the fact that, that the people in chicago really embrace kind of lighting the houses up now ours admittedly last well into january because we like them <laughs> so what I about you what it. are some of the favorite kind of holiday and winter traditions that you guys like to do around the city um so my favorite is actually ice skating i love going ice skating so the ribbon is amazing in Maggie Daly Park. I think have it was guys, such a great addition. Have you tried Gallagher Way yet? No, no, no. And I heard that they actually put it in the actual Wrigley Field. Oh yeah, not out not out front where it used to well, be. Well, yeah, it used to be like this little puddle in yeah. front, um, which was never fun because <laughs> <laughs> literally by the time you got around once, it was like two seconds. Yeah. And then so many people like skated on it and the ice was just so bad. So right. I'm really interested to see, but I guess they're closing uh, January 8th. So, okay, so if you're going to do you that, you need to do it, do it as a, as a, yeah, but there's actually early winter. quite a few but I like, skating rinks around. Yeah. I love the one on um, Michigan Avenue and Millennium Park. That one's my all time favorite. It does get a little line, like the lines are a little heavier, oh, um, but I do like that. Um, Warren Park is supposed to be really good too, and it's like huge. Um, I heard that I that's been. outdoor, and then the it other is, yeah. indoor one that I actually have quite a few clients that that skate there all year round. Just talking about ice skating is McFetridge Park. Yeah, I know actually a lot of hockey players who um, do the one in West Loop as well. So uh, Johnny's Ice House, yeah, Johnny's Ice House for certain. But so I like that. Um, God, what else do? I I mean, I don't do any of the, like the plays or anything like that, like the Christmas Carol. I always. I heard it was really good this year. Like the guy who plays Scrooge was amazing. Very, and like very Scroogey. Yeah, but I also heard like the special effects were really good. So maybe I'll, I'll check that out this year. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I definitely like that. I always also like the Christmas lighting in, um, in November. Yeah. I mean, it's already passed, but I think that's always fun because Santa ends it yeah. and it's like the big parade. Um, yeah. No, there's a lot of fun things to do out there for certain. Yeah, I actually did the Chris Kindle Mart the um, two weeks ago. The one ago. downtown. The one downtown. Okay, because now there's two in the city. Also, go during November, not in January, because <laughs> this is the first year I went super early, and I normally go towards the end of it. And so by the end of it, it is so cold, and yeah. you don't like being cold. This was the first time I went, and it was like fifty degrees, and Pleasant. I was like. It was so pleasant. I was like, I actually want to spend time here. Yeah. Um, yeah. My okay. partner wanted so to. So yeah. Buy so there's a hippo. two. There's two. Chris. There's two markets now in the city. There's the yes. one downtown, and then there's the one at. Are we supposed to say the one at Wrigley Field or the one at Gallagher Way? It's Gallagher called Way, but it's Gallagher Wrigley, Way. It's right outside it's of Wrigley. At, at Wrigley. So yeah. Okay. Super. Okay. Well, let's go back into this. Right now, we're going to yeah. transition. We had somebody ask about what they can be doing if they're buying in 2023. What if I'm going to plan on selling in 2023, what should I be doing now to get ready? So the one thing that I always say with selling, a lot of people come to us right as they want to sell and it's, there's no preparation in, in, in it. And so I always say, come to us a little earlier so we can actually strategize. We can put a marketing plan together. We can strategize with you, especially if you're looking to purchase and like sell at the same time, it helps us determine timing strategy and all of it. So it's was, true. It's, 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 it's a little more complicated when you're selling totally. for certain. And it definitely takes a little bit more lead time. We talk a ton about strategy and planning, but really for us to be so effective or more effective, mm -hmm. it's not, trust me, we get plenty of people that come in and say, Hey, I want to sell right now. And we can put it into place and we, we can, can do, do it. it. But if we have a little bit of time, we have that ability to do more. And I'd actually say, we the can next, be more intentional, percent. essentially. Well, in the next 30 days for me, I, you know, and I know for you too, is so much consultation. I spend mm -hmm. more time doing kind of what we're going to do this year meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, we jump on a Zoom, we talk for 45 minutes to an hour. This is our goals. This is our intention. This is kind of our timeline. What makes sense? 
that's so much of what we're doing this time of year. So yes, getting in early. There's no such thing as too early, really. No. I mean, we absolutely talk to people that might say, hey, I'm going to be an end of 2023 buyer or seller. What, what should I be thinking about now to get ready for it for certain? Um, okay, so starting the process early. Mm -hmm. um, once again, the whole idea of, of, I think, finding your team should be right up there. Finding a good real estate agent. Hopefully somebody yeah. had a great experience with whomever sold them the property. Yes. That's not always the case. Sometimes that person has <laughs> retired or left the business or didn't Or you don't survive. remember their name. <laughs> or you don't remember their name. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, yeah, there's a lot of reasons that people look to navigate to a different agent. So finding a great agent is first and foremost. Um, I think putting together that strategy and plan is right up there. If somebody's selling, quite often they're going to buy, right? That's, yeah. It's not always the case. There's some very, very different situations, but a lot of times they're going to. And if they're going to, that is a little bit more complicated. That takes what are they financially able to do? What do they want to do? And then we have to kind of put together what I call the buy-sell dance, right? How do we yeah, structure do we it to structure? make people successful? I mean, the other things that we usually tell people is that almost, at, or I shouldn't say almost, every listing that we list, we're going to do a staging appointment with them. We're going to walk through and talk about how do we present this property as well as possible. Not all of our clients like us as much at the end of those conversations. <laughs> Truth be told. But, but we need to package it up and present it like a present totally. to a potential buyer. How do we so, put our best foot forward? And for some people, it's staging. For some people, it's working within what they have in their home. Some people maybe need some small modifications, mm -hmm. you know, some paint, some touch up. Um, how do we help our clients present as the best possible piece? And, and that's part of the getting in early. We've got clients that some of them, it takes two, three, four, six months to get that, them to that point. So they yeah. may be somebody saying, hey, I really wanted to be a, a July or August seller. Those are meetings that there's absolutely value in having now so that when we get to that point, they're not stressed in the fact of saying, hey, you just gave me a huge laundry list of how we present the best possible and now I need to come back and now I need to do all this stuff. They're ready. Moving is stressful. I mean, so moving is really, really, really stressful. And so you do compile it all at once. It's a lot harder and it just adds to that stress. So yeah, I, I agree with you. What if do, you what they... move, if you, if we can prepare sooner, it'll alleviate some of that stress. I think that, or at least dissipate it. Quote is that, or not the quote, <laughs> but the statistic states that moving is one of the top five most stressful things that you'll do. Totally. Right. Um, and you're absolutely correct. If we can get involved earlier, we can help to manage that stress. Mm -hmm. We can help to alleviate some of it. I mean, we're not, we can't make it stress-free, right? The reality is, is it's stressful, but we can help to make it easier and better um, from that perspective. The other thing that I like to do a lot of times with our sellers is sometimes even get those, get those photographs done early. Like how many- <laughs> For winter, when it's white out and it looks bleak yeah it's way to, way better to take it this the summer before even if we don't know you're selling we'd rather just have a front photo the exterior just to again captivate that that buyer in that winter market yeah we have quite a few clients that were prepping for 2023 already mm -hmm. who called us in and we were talking to in conjunction in the spring and the summer of 2022 we've already got all their exteriors we already know our sellers that have said hey Whenever it happens, if you're going to list in March and outside doesn't look so good, we've got some great exteriors of, of your house. So absolutely great points. Yeah, okay. So once again, that. I think it comes back to reach out early reach out if you early. can, right? Sometimes we get a relocation prep, package prep, prep. or somebody has to, but reach out early if you can, finding your right agent, solidifying your team and, and being willing to strategize and put together a plan that's going to make our clients as successful as they can be. Yeah. The other thing also is we can then help them, especially if they're moving to other markets, because some sellers, the reason why they're moving is because they're moving to other markets. Yep. We can actually reach out and let other agents know in those markets that we have connections with that are perform at a similar level that we perform at, yep. that we can make those introductions. And then we can also pair up with them so that we can strategize that buy, sell kind of dance that we were talking about. Great point. Great point. We have connections throughout the country and realistically yeah. throughout the world so that we, we know that, right. Our expertise doesn't, doesn't take us to different mm -hmm. parts of the country or the world, but we can at least take a, take a, a, a breath and say, Hey, we can get you into people that are going to take good yeah. care of you versus somebody just kind of randomly going out there and trying to, trying to figure it out. Totally. Okay. Super. Cool. What's All up right. next? So this one, so preface this, I mean, it's, 
we're talking about predictions for 2023. Um, obviously, we're, we are going to release our special edition podcast kind of thing um, where we do talk about 2023. But just a high overview what are so your pred- expectations? Okay. And, and you're absolutely right. We are, our next episode is going to be a bonus. <laughs> it's the time that we, every year we make predictions on what happened is going to happen in the market. And then at the end of the year, we grade ourselves and we make predictions for the next year. So we are going to dive really, really deep into this. <laughs> but if I'm just going to give kind of high level one thought, um, I'm going to talk about the fact that the overall number of sales are going to come down, Right. And why I think yeah. this is this is so relevant, right? We've talked about the media at nauseum. Not going to talk about it today. Yeah. But <laughs> the overall number of sales are going to come down, and with that, we have to understand there is a direct disconnect. Just because the number of sales come down doesn't mean that values go down. Totally. There is there are two separate separate entities, two t- metrics that we follow, but the overall number of sales should come down. We have a lot of different things driving this. First and foremost, we've had a couple of years in which a lot of sales, a lot of people have tra- transferred and changed their housing environment, yeah. right? Those have been a high, higher numbers. We know that they're on higher numbers. Number two, we talk a lot about this with the interest rate. We have a lot of people that are very comfortable right now in very low interest rates. So even somebody that maybe bought a house 10 years ago that it's time for a change, they may push off that thought process if they can stay there because right now they refinanced and they have a... 2.9% interest rate. Yep. The other idea of what I've had quite a few clients talk to me about recently. Renting. Renting. Is that <laughs> I've got clients that have properties with very low interest rates that they, like never, they never thought about becoming a landlord until they said, hey, I own this property. Totally. This hard asset that I can essentially go in and I can I could rent it out. And, mm-hmm. and it makes sense right now. I really didn't plan to do this, but yeah, let's move into our next property. Let's keep this. Some investors will absolutely tell you from that perspective that they are saving kind of their interest rate, right? They're not transferring it to the next property, yeah. but they're not giving it up. So I think with those things in mind, I think the number of homes that come onto the market are going to be less and the overall sales are going to be down. Yep. I mean, what are you going to say on that? One, one <laughs> quick prediction for 2023. I think... I think our inventory is going to match our demand, which is going to keep prices very, very steady. I think we're. Okay, explain that to me. So, again, you're talking about inventory going down because people aren't going to move. So, that's going to restrict the supply side. Basic economics is Mm -hmm. supply and demand. And so, if your supply is coming down, but you're also, your demand is keeping up, which interest rates are coming down already. They've already come down a percentage point, like in the last month. So, I mean, we're having a lot of buyer con- conversations and consultations right now for next year. And I think that people obviously are renting still. And so those first time home buyers are still going to come into the market. I mean, remember, millennials right now are hitting. So the average, the average age that somebody buys the house, their first house is 30. Okay. So if that's the case, we have the most amount of 30 year olds coming into the market in the next year. Which is why we've also seen the last two years be really popular with first-time home buyers. First-time home buyers so I think certain. that is going to outpace. I think people are still going to want to purchase because their life is at that stage. And again, you marry the house, you don't marry the rate, and rates change. And so I don't think that interest rates are going to give pause to people thinking about it. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to drastically affect some people, especially in Chicago, yep. because the affordability is so great here that I, th- I think it's just going to maintain each other. And supply and demand, I think our prices are going to stay steady because of that. Okay. So your your prediction... My prediction is that prices will stay... Yeah. going to go... Inventory will go down a little bit, which okay. is great. It'll, it'll maintain our market. And I think, yeah, demand is still going to be strong. I think we're going to still see the seasonality. I think similar to what we've seen the last two years where, you know, our spring market is a little bit busier than kind of that summer fall market. But yeah. No, I I, think it's interesting. And I I think I I agree with a ton of what you say, but I, I think our inventory could grow a little bit in certain sectors. Yeah, totally. And that's, I think the clarification to say is that I don't think we are at any point at of next year going to be rolling around in inventory, (laughs) right? But I think we could see a little bit of growth, 
but I do think that we're going to see the demand in it. And I do think that all of that being said, we're going to see that the, the market, as we've talked about, is going to start pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another fun one to wrap it up. All right. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot here, right? Okay. <laughs> this is a very personal one. So um, we always like very... to think it's personal. Uh, I always struggle to figure out great holiday gifts for, for people that I want to get gifts for. Do you guys have any great recommendations? <laughs> I mean, that's so sweet. I wish I am just not a holiday person and I've never been a gift person. I just, wait, what? Say that again. You're not a holiday person. I, I mean, I am a holiday. I'm, div I'm from divorced family. So, you know, splitting the times between like every single family family member is very 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 hard it's stressful. and so it's stressful and so i've just come to prefer i i'd rather give you my time than gifts and so i've always liked that but um i do like the little personal gifts like if you're hey like i was just thinking about you i like doing that all year round like if i am just hey like pick it up and just send I was it thinking like, about you or something like yeah that. i think that's a little bit more for me than kind of like, Hey, this is Christmas and yeah. it's a gift time, but I do like local shopping. I mean, like I always think that's really fun. I yeah. Think but I mean, I would say some of the, some of the best gifts you've given me over the years are you find the greatest books. Yeah. And to me, that's a fantastic <laughs> gift because essentially you read something, something was impactful to you yeah. and then you wanted to share it with me. Well, I got that from a bunch of other people, like, because I, you know, like when, whenever we travel, some people are like, Hey, I just read this good book or like, Hey, I just met you at this conference. And here's like a financial book that I found was really, really impactful. I think that's always really like, no, special. I agree. And I think it's true. I mean, I think you hit on so many really good points there. First and foremost, the holidays are a bit stressful. Like, and I think that that's a reminder that we just all have to try and enjoy what we can, right? Yeah. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of expectations. There's a lot of family. There's a lot of things and they're all great things. But I do think that it, the expectation has to be managed. I can't tell you how many people I talk to after the holidays that are just like, whew, we I'm survived. Exhausted. We made it. <laughs> yeah. We got through. Let's do it again. So, I mean, one of the things that we always try and do is we try and kind of take stock where we can totally. and kind of remember that our stressors are blessings, yeah. right? And yeah, to totally. really do well with it. No, a couple so what's of your favorite. So we're doing a couple of fun things and maybe a spoiler alert. Um, first and foremost, I think, you know, we have a farm. Um, yeah, we make honey, not we, us together, <laughs> a beekeeper makes okay. honey on our farm. Um, so this is the first year that we're actually packaging some of that. Oh, and fine. no, we're not selling it. We've had retailers reach out to us to ask. It's not something we're doing yet, but we want to gift this to, you know, friends people and friends and people. family, because yeah. it's one of those things that it's, it's a little token of us, right? Yeah. It's something that we created. It's something a little different. Um, the other thing that we did this year that, um, once again, I like, I like things that, that means things to people, right? Yeah. Um, we had a, we had a close, uh, family to us who lost their dog this year, which, oh, um, no. not like we're all puppy lost. people. Like, yeah. That their, their dog went to the rainbow bridge um, what we did for them is we had a, a local artist paint a portrait of the dog, um, oh for them God. to hang in their house. And that was one of those things that, you know, we've had that done for us a few times and it was just like one of the most wonderful gifts I ever received. Wow. So kind of touching into that personal stuff for people. That is really nice. I mean, I had a friend who sent me the picture of Rodeo, mm -hmm. like they had it sketched and had an artist do it and framed it and I have it on my desk. So I should actually I think tell that's the really story as a quick that's story. Really nice. A quick story before we wrap up. One of the nicest gifts I've probably ever gotten in my life, right? Yeah. Um came from a client after a closing. Mm. Totally caught me off guard. They had a local kid, somebody that, you know, did I think they babysat for them that was an artist as well. And she had a sketch done of our two dogs that had both passed within the last like two years oh wow and she had the the teenager draw yeah. this beautiful sketch and have it framed and mounted and put it in our house and i tell you i opened that up and the fact that a client had the ability to to do something like that like literally i'm not that an emotional very, person very, very but it brought me to tears wow that's really great it was yeah oh my God. so personalized things anything that kind of yeah. comes from us the, the fact that somebody takes a little bit of time and energy to, totally. to put into some thought process, I always think are best. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. Thanks. Well, I think I think we hit a lot of great points. I we think we, did. we are gearing up. Um, obviously, next up is going to be our market report. We're going to judge how we did, and we're going to put yes. some market predictions out there. Ooh. 
Good luck to us. <laughs> Hopefully we didn't fail. Hopefully we didn't fail. I'm, I'm, it was a tough year though. I, okay. You can't say like we failed because honestly, at the end of the day, we had so many successes this year and we had, I'm just talking about the report. Oh, card. I was no, like, no, we had a great, it was, our clients had a ton of success. I'm just worried about our report card. Uh, it's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out. So that's a wrap. Episode three is in the on, books. The books, on the books, yeah. in the books, in the books, on the books. Who knows? Know. We did it. We finished until next time, Chicago. <laughs>